Hi, I'm Rocco Steno and welcome to Storymakers. Today my guest is Antoinette Tortoise, all the way out in Los Angeles, California. And she's the creator of A New Green Day. So Antoinette, there's poetry in this book and, and there are great illustrations. So are you a poet or an artist? I am a picture book maker. I finally figured out that's what I do. Like it's a it's about putting words and pictures together in a way that makes something new. And I you know I spent years in advertising and it was always I mean it's all about image and word together making something powerful, a communication that delivers an emotion or an or the desire for an action and I realized that translates to picture books as well. So Antoinette, tell me about the book. This is the first picture book manuscript I ever wrote. And I took a picture book writing class. It's something I'd always wanted to do. We had a prompt and the prompt was to write a story where a character got a message. And what came to my mind was a little girl picking up a leaf and feeling like the tree was communicating with her. And when I was a kid, I basically knew all the trees in my neighborhood. I considered them my friends. My neighbor's Chinese elm tree protected me at night. I asked it to watch over me, and it always did because no monster ever ate me. So I always trusted trees and thought of them as friendly, friendly beings. So that kind of got me started thinking about other nature things that moved me when I was a kid that I felt connected to or inspired by or delighted by. This is a book that has riddles on every other page almost. So tell, tell us about the riddles. Well, I wrote this book so many different ways. I wrote it as a narrative story. I wrote it as little poems. Like here's an example. I am a hummingbird. I am an iridescent question asked of every flower. I am a thought that changes direction mid-sentence. Yes, no, yes. You could get more abstract if you told what, what it was up front. But I played around with it many different ways. Sometimes they were one-liners, sometimes they were longer. And I finally decided that, for a, that a riddle was just a way more fun way to read because then you have to guess and then the picture is the answer to the question. So all the answers of your riddles are things that are found in nature, but some of them are living things and some of them are not. For the people that are watching this, uh, here's uh, one of the riddles. I am a candy sucked smooth in the river's mouth. Let me sweeten your pocket. Ah, candy. So it's something that's shaped almost like a piece of candy. You know how when you, you have a Tootsie Roll pop and it has that ridge around the, the equator? And when you suck on it long enough, it turns into a perfect sphere. Right. So I love that image of that a stream was had all these rocks and it was sucking them smooth like we suck candy. Right. And the, uh, and the answer is pebble. Right. The various things that are answers in your book when you were creating the uh, images of them, did you have like uh, pebbles on your drawing table? I have rocks all over my house. I built a little patio outside my back door and it is covered with stones I have collected from all over the country and all over the world. I mean, I've went to Croatia and brought rocks home in my, in my suitcase because I love the stones that have been smoothed by the action of water over, you know, thousands of years. It's, they're just so beautiful. And I have them on my windowsills. I have them by my desk. And for this book, I collected so many leaves. And I would be like in this giant parking lot outside of this huge shopping mall, like bending down and picking my favorite oak leaves off the ground. And sometimes people would stop and go, lady, are you okay? And I'm like, nah, just, collecting oak leaves for my book. Do you have any of the riddles that didn't make it handy that you could read one to me and maybe I can guess? Okay, let me see if you can guess this one. I make leaves dance for you. I tie the dust into knots and whirl shreds of newspaper into poems. 
Who am I? Oh, okay. I think is it the wind? Yes. Okay. It's the wind. Oh, uh, let, let me try one more. Okay, this is a one-line one. I lay a silver blanket on your bed. A uh, silver blanket on my bed. Is it um, twilight or moonlight? Well, I was thinking moonlight, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be starlight, the moon, moonlight. You know, that's uh, fun, and I think that it would be fun if our viewers created a riddle and then created the image that is the answer. So do you have any tips on creating the riddle and creating the image? I was thinking about this, like I thought if you had a pile of spaghetti on your plate, you could write a riddle about it. Like I thought, okay, if I, cause my husband made spaghetti last night. If I had a pile of spaghetti on my plate before I put sauce on it, maybe I would go, it's a pile of kite string you can eat, or it's kite string that could fly a pizza. You know, like just playing around with imagery related to, like if you look at a noodle, it looks like a string, but it could be a worm. You know, I mean, you just kind of let your mind riff and it, and connect different images together. Mine were all about nature, so I knew I each, you know, like if you wanted to write a riddle, it I think it helps to write it about something you feel connected to, that either you enjoy or that grosses you out or something that interests you. Like if you wanted to make, if you like mechanical things, you could write a riddle about a lawnmower, you know, and think of like, okay, like I'm sitting in my house and I hear this thing rah, roaring outside. What does that remind me of? You know, like you kind of, that's how you, you just let your mind make its connections. So if you try this uh, activity at home or at school, we'd love to see your image. And of course, we'd love to read your riddle. So you can share that riddle with us in the comment section below. And everyone else that reads our comments can take a guess at the riddle. That's great. I'd love to read those. Do you have a favorite illustration and or a favorite riddle? The one that you said about the uh, the pebble is one of my favorites because I really love pebbles quite a bit. And I think the tadpole one, I am a comma in the long, long sentence of the stream. Someday soon you'll hear my croak. I just love the idea of a, of a stream being a sentence that goes on and on because streams babble. They make noise, they're speaking to you, and I and tadpoles look like commas. So that really resonated for me. I love that image. And I think my favorite picture is this one because I love leafy green light. Like light shining through semi-transparent leaves is something that just makes my heart sing. And when we bought a house, I was like, there has to be leafy green light out my bedroom window. And that's, we moved to a house where there's leafy green light outside my window. One of the answers to a riddle is shadow and you had to go out and do some research. So tell us about that research. So like, I did not know what a shadow right before sunset looked like stretched up a hill. And um, I went out to the desert with my husband and my daughter and I photographed them doing the pose that I wanted on sort of on the sides of rocks, but they weren't steep enough and high enough. So I was like, asked my husband if he knew where a hill was. And I don't, he has the most amazing memory. He just like remembers crazy stuff. And he goes, okay, at UCLA, there's a hill where the sun from the West hits it in the late afternoon. And we went there and it was UCLA campus was filled with tourists taking pictures. There were people from all over the world wandering around. And I had to like stand on this, at the base of this hill and do this crazy pose with my arms and my feet up in the air. And at the top of the hill, there were these college guys sitting in a tree and they were like, hey lady, you know, and I mean, you make a fool of yourself for the sake of your picture book. It's something you have to do. Antoinette, it was so much fun learning about the process of a new green day. And I think I am going to go home and write 
a riddle and post it in the comments section. So thank you again for being with us, Antoinette. Thank you for having me, Rocco. It was really fun to talk to you. So remember, until next time, read a book in any format. <laughs>